In this video, I'm going to be discussing converting terminating decimals to fractions. Well, a terminating decimal is going to be any decimal that uh, we have some digits behind the decimal point, obviously, that considers it a decimal, but the digits are going to stop. There's just a few of them, and then they have an ending point, uh, as opposed to decimals that repeat forever and ever and ever. So our first example is 0 0.7. So, on these terminating decimals, the way that we read the decimal out loud will help guide us uh, to write it as a fraction. So, we have 0.7, so there's one digit behind the decimal place, and that place is called the tenths place. So, we have 7 in that tenths place, so we can say when we read this number, it'll be 7 tenths. And, as you read the decimal, it'll be the same as the fraction, 7 tenths tenths. Notice we had one digit behind the decimal point, and we'll have one zero here in the denominator. We'll come back to that a little more here in a bit. So our second example, 0 0.62. So we have two decimal digits that are being used. We have the tenths place and the hundredths place. So when we read this, we're going to read it as 62 hundredths. So we'll put it 62 over 100. And again, we're using one, two decimal digits, and we have one, two zeros that we have for our denominator. I notice, though, on this 62 over 100, I can reduce that because it looks like both the numerator and the denominator are even. So let's go ahead and divide a 2 out of both of those. And when I do that, 62 divided by 2 is 31, and then 100 divided by 2 will be 50. So we'll have 31 over 50. Which is nice because when you have these fractions, if you want to kind of verify that what you've done is uh, correct, in your calculator or long division, you can go 31 divided by 50, and your calculator will give you 0 0.62. Or, of course, if you use long division, 0 0.62. Okay, so let's uh, kind of scoot up here. Let's do my third example here. I have 0 0.385. So I have one, two, three digits that are being used behind the decimal place. So the first one here is the tenths, then the hundredths, then the thousandths. So when I read this, I'm going to read it as 385 thousandths. So that means I'll have a thousand in my denominator. And of course I kind of knew that because one, two, three decimal places are being used. So one, two, three zeros that I have here. And uh, again, I notice this can be simplified because both the top and bottom are divisible by 5. So 385 divided by 5 should give you 77. And then 1,000 divided by 5 should give you 200. So again, you can always check to see if this simplified fraction is correct by checking the division, 77 divided by 200, and you will get 0 0.385. Okay, so for this fourth example here, I have 0 0.0075. So you'll notice I have some zeros that are being used behind the decimal place. But does it uh, discount the digits that are being used? Well, not really. I'm still using one, two, three, four digits. It's just that some of them in the front are zeros. If they were in the back, of course, it's a terminating decimal, so we can just eliminate any trailing zeros. But since they're in the front here, between the decimal point and other digits, we have to count them. So we have the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths spot. So I know that I'm going to have ten thousand in my denominator. Also, we have one, two, three, four digit places that are being used. So one, two, three, four zeros in the bottom. So what number goes on top? Well, since we have these zeros in the front, we don't really care about those. So we'll just say 75 right there. And again, I notice that uh, 75 over 10,000 can be reduced, and actually by 25, because I know that uh, 25 times 3 um, is 75. So when I divide by 25, I'll get 3 on top. And 10,000 divided by 25 should be 400. So uh, again, like the previous examples, you can check this if you would like to and take 3 divided by 400, and you will see that you do get 75 ten thousandths as your decimal, 0 0.0075. So let's look at three more examples. 
uh, in this first of the last three, we have 1.2. So notice that these last three examples will have a whole number in front of the decimal point. So kind of as we're changing this into a fraction, this 1 in front will just be a whole number of 1, and we'll end up having a mixed number. So the decimal part we're going to treat just as we treated previously. 0.2, we're having one decimal digit, so it'll be over 10. So it'll be 1 and 2 tenths. But of course my 2 tenths can be simplified. I can divide 2 out of both of them. So my final answer on this should be 1 and 1 fifth. Okay, so we had our 1 out here. That was our whole number. So we still have this 1 out here. And the decimal is the part that becomes the fraction. So 0.2 became 2 over 10, which reduced to 1 fifth. Okay, so my second one here is 8.75. And once again, this 8 up front is a whole part. It's a whole number. So I'm going to put an 8 as the whole number part of my mixed number. And then 0.75 will end up being 75 over, and then again we can think about this how we read this, we say 8 and 75 hundredths, so we'll be 75 over 100, and then I notice here that 75 over 100, both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by 25, so when I do that, my fraction portion reduces to 3 fourths, so in this example I have 8 and 3 over 4, uh, just kind of like our decimal portion was 8 and, and then we had a little part, this 0.75, that ended up reducing and turning into 3 over 4. Okay, so let's look at the last example that we have here. We have 22 and 5 tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So 22 and 5 thousandths. So as we've been doing, this 22 is the whole part out here. That whole number doesn't change. And then 5 thousandths because there's one, two, three digits being used after the decimal point, so we'll have one, two, three zeros. When I reduce this, the 22 doesn't change, the whole part never changes when you're reducing, and it looks like I can divide five out of the top and bottom. When I do that, five divided by five is one, and a thousand divided by five should be 200. So in my final example here, I have 22 and one over 200.